been quite a development, an unforeseen development. Uh, CBS News has now reported there are discussions underway about the future of President Trump and occupying the Oval Office. I want to bring in Margaret Brennan, who is the moderator of Face the Nation, who has this new reporting. Margaret, what can you tell us? Nora, this is not news that we deliver lightly, and I want to make clear that what I'm explaining here is what is being discussed, whispered about among some cabinet members today, and that is whether to move forward with formal proceedings to try to invoke the 25th Amendment. That would allow for the removal of President Trump from office and for Vice President Mike Pence to effectively become commander-in-chief for the remaining days of the Trump presidency. Uh, my sources are telling me it has not been formally presented to the vice president. This is not about to happen. It is, however, being discussed right now. The very fact that the highest levels of the U.S. government and cabinet members are discussing this uh, is quite newsworthy, quite notable, uh, and it underscores the moment that we are at. Uh, I just want to make clear, this is not just political watchers. These are not just Democratic lawmakers who had been speculating all day that this should happen. I'm talking about actual members of the cabinet. Now, we have further reporting to do uh, to try to pin down where each cabinet member is, where their thinking is at the moment. We know for most of the day, the National Security Advisor, for example, was not at the president's side, but was rather traveling in Florida uh, on previously scheduled travel down to troops in uh, Miami area. We know that the president's son-in-law recently arrived back at the White House within the past few hours. But in terms of each cabinet member, what they're thinking is whether they think it is necessary at this moment to take these actions. Uh, that is where I, I am most focused uh, in, in trying to get a read. But it is extraordinary. The vice president himself, remember, was put in harm's way today by these pro-Trump supporters uh, when they stormed the Capitol and he had to seek safety and shelter along with congressional leadership. So these events of the past two days, including what happened with that key race, uh, Senate race, being lost in terms of the Republican control of the Senate uh, has caused a real uh, rethinking among some Republican leaders uh, about what the future of this waning few days of the Trump presidency should look like. And Margaret, let's discuss exactly what the 25th Amendment um, entails. Ed O'Keefe has luck luckily brought today, earlier today, his pocketbook copy of the U.S. Constitution. And of course, the 25th <laughs> Amendment has to deal with um, presidential disability and succession. And in the case of the removal of the president from office or of his death or resignation, the vice president shall become president. What would this entail? How many members of the cabinet would have to vote in favor? What's the process? We don't know where exactly each cabinet member is here on this process, but it would have to be something that uh, would have to be formally presented. And that's why I want I, I set the table by saying it has not been presented to the vice president yet that these proceedings would be getting underway. My understanding is there is conversation to try to build some level of quorum. Um, before that happens, uh, we also know that, I mean, just based on the vice president and the events of the day, he has not been uh, able to be in contact with many people. Uh, we know that he was the one who was in contact with the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, for example, to help to activate uh, the National Guard and talk about how to handle the violence in the streets. Uh, but basic contact between cabinet members, um, it has been somewhat limited today. So the procedures are what we need to be working on today, how this would actually play out. Um, but I also want to underscore uh, in, that the rest of the world is watching this very carefully. Um, we have leaders of authoritarian systems, uh, of dictatorships and democracies condemning what is happening in the U.S. Capitol right now. And that is not lost. That embarrassment is not lost uh, on uh, many high-level officials, uh, cabinet members who also have political hopes for themselves in the future.